In this video, we're going to ponder the theology of Matthew chapter 16, verses 17 through 19, when Jesus says to Peter, uh, blessed are you, Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and the gates of Hades shall never overcome it. Those are monumental passages that have been debated by Protestants and Catholics for centuries. On a personal note, I can remember years ago debating with someone on this passage, and this person got so frustrated with it that he gritted his teeth and, and said, uh, I am so sick of you Catholics using that passage. <laughs> it is a thorn in their side. But I'd like to discuss some of the theological questions surrounding that passage, give you something to think about, something to ponder. But I will also say that these theological questions are not my own. They have come from the theologians during the Protestant Reformation who were raising these questions, which the reformers could not answer. First question. If the gates of Hades shall never overcome it or shall not prevail, as Jesus says, what was the reason behind the Reformation? What is the reason to protest the church founded by Jesus or to reform it? As Martin Luther claimed several times, as I showed you in my series, that the Catholic church was overrun by the Antichrist. This begs the question... Who is lying, Martin Luther or Jesus? If you've read any of the comments on any of my videos, the ones that spark up debate, you'll find that a large majority of Protestants still believe the Catholic Church is run by the Antichrist. Are they anti-biblical or are they confused? If Jesus laid the foundation of the church on Peter, the rock, remember, wise men build their house on the rock, then can anyone else come along and make another foundation, make a new church, reform or protest Jesus's original church? St. Paul says to the Corinthians in the first letter to the Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, says, let no other foundation be laid except the one by Jesus Christ. Next question, if Jesus and St. Paul are both wrong and the church was overcome by Satan, what was the time period? Where in the history of the Catholic church did Satan prevail? But before you answer that question, let me give you another Bible quote to consider. And that would be Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 28, where it reads, God purchased the church with the blood of his own son. So now you have to think, okay, so how long did God's sacrifice of his own son last before Satan came in and overtook his church? Could the sacrifice of Jesus dying on the cross be overtaken by Satan? Did Christ die in vain? What if we look in Luke's gospel, chapter 11, verse 20 through 22 through 23, where Jesus talks about a strong man protecting his house, but a stronger man can come in and overtake his house. Was Jesus referring to himself, that he's not strong enough to overtake the devil, even if he dies on the cross? When Calvin was presented with this argument, Calvin said that the true church survived for 500 years, and somewhere around Pope Gregory in the 500s did Satan prevail and overtake uh, God's church. And then for the next thousand years, from 500 to 1500 until Calvin comes along, that is dominated by Satan, according to Calvin. Acts chapter five, verse 38 through 39, 
says that things made by God will endure, while things made by man will fail. Now, if you add that with the Catholic Church history going on 2,100 years, how can you possibly debate that the Catholic Church was not divinely inspired nor made by God? Theologians have often compared the beginnings of the Catholic Church and the beginnings of the new protest or the reformed church. And they show that the Catholic Church was founded on the apostles and the disciples who were blessed with the ability to perform miracles and heal. That's shown in Acts of the Apostles. As you can go to um, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 4. They were given wondrous signs in many tongues. And then they compare it with this new church that started 1,500 years later, and they ask, where are the miracles? Where are the prophecies? Show us just one. And yet, if you watched my series, I showed you one on the other side. The Catholic Church got one of its greatest miracles in Guadalupe, Our Lady of Guadalupe. How do you debate? How do you argue on the side of the Protestant Church and the beginnings of that? It's marked with war and chaos, confusion as well. None of the Protestant reformers could agree on anything, and they all hated each other. Many early theologians likened the Protestant Reformation to the Tower of Babel. No one could understand the other people because they were all speaking different doctrines and different interpretations, which is still going on today. But let's discuss the stones or the rocks that were not built on Peter's foundation. The Matthew passage says that the gates of Hades will not overcome this foundation. But for those who are not built on Peter's foundation, it implies that you will be overcome by Satan. And this argument, or this theory, I should say, has a little bit of a darker twist to it to think about. What if the Protestant Reformation was allowed to happen? What if some people are just destined to burn in hell? What if some people can be shown the truth, but they deny it? Perhaps by God or by their own free will. By God saying their hearts were hardened. They couldn't see the truth. Or by free will, they could and they chose not to. Matthew chapter 22 verse 14 says, Many will be called, but few will be chosen. Many are invited, but few are chosen. In Matthew's gospel, chapter 25, at the end of days, Jesus says he will separate the sheep and the goats. Notice that the goats are included in there, but he separates them and excludes them. In St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 13, says that God will judge those outside of the church. In Luke's gospel, chapter 12, Jesus says, I did not come to bring peace. I came to divide. It's a much darker theory to think about or consider. Perhaps God allowed the Protestant Reformation to happen. Perhaps God allowed Satan to create the Protestant Reformation. After all, it is God who has the keys to Hades. That's found in Revelation uh, chapter 1, verse 18. Think about it, and let me know what you think in the comments.